Welcome to Marvelicious Toys. We bring you news and reviews of Marvel toys, statues, and more. Because not all Marvel collections can be bagged and boarded. They're not just toys, they're Marvelicious. We are at the Hasbro booth with Dwight Stahl once again. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Good, and yourself? I'm doing very well, thank you. All right, I just... I have to start by complimenting you again on a massive Marvel Legends display here. Every year you guys impress me more, but I have to ask, every time I've seen you for like three, four years, I've asked about Blade. Are you trolling me now? You put Blade in there. Oh yeah, no, we like to, we like to, we like to uh, feed the pain, you know, uh, and, and keep you guys strung out as long as possible. Uh, we're actually pretty cruel mistresses at Hasbro, and uh, you know, we're out here to punk you. No, um, you guys all wanted Blade. We made a, uh, a Blade figure quite a few years ago now. I think it was 2012, and it never saw the light of day. Uh, all, if the powers that be agree, that figure will never exist because it's not good. It was on old, old, you know, outdated stuff. At the time, it was fantastic, you know, but it doesn't match with where we're at today. So, you know, something that you're seeing in there is much more like what you would get uh, if and when Blade would actually make it to shelves. So... You know, I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no, but you know, we've been, we've been lucky enough uh, with our, our Marvel Disney partners to allow us to feed in some Marvel Knights characters into the Spider Mythos uh, as far as like our Legends lines go. So I don't think you'd see them probably any other place, but you know, the chance of a, a Blade in the, in the future, you know, you know it's not, it's not a impossible. Good to know. I just, I saw that one. I always look through for the Easter eggs and yes. things with this line and I spoke to you a little bit this morning and just talked about the way the line is going really strong. There have been a couple of waves that hit very recently, at least online, just starting to ship the X-Men wave and then the Abomination wave and all of that. And a lot of that happened without any kind of pre-warning, without us knowing until the retailers started getting word that those were coming out. What, what ha what's behind the scenes on that? Is that going to be the way going forward? A surprise? Here's another wave of legends. I wish we could surprise you more often. You know, you guys are uh, you guys are much better at trolling the internet than I am, and you guys usually find out what I'm doing before I've even finished a complete thought. So uh, you guys are you guys are the masterminds of that world. Um, uh, no, uh, it's not intended to be that way. You know, we you know in an ideal world we'd have you know. Uh, you know, perfectly clean lines of communication where everybody knows the, at the right time what's coming. You know, in this world, in this day and age, it's impossible to, you know, keep everything perfect every time. So, uh, you know, our, our full team is always trying as best as possible to make sure that the fans know what is coming so you guys can plan for it and be re ready for it because we know how important it is for all of our fans of any age to, uh, you know, know where to look when something comes out because we have a lot of we have a lot more exclusives now than we've ever had in the past, uh, especially in our fan segments, which, you know, me as a designer, I'm super stoked because it means I get to make more awesome stuff. Uh, but that only matters, and that's only a win for us if you guys know where you need to be to get it when it comes out. But, uh, no, that's not the intention. Um, I, I, you know, I, I wish some of my partners were here to help uh, fill in the blanks for you, but, you know, I'm sure, you know, we, could, we can find out. Oh, I'm sorry, we can find out a way to get more of that information to you, but, you know. We just, you know, we want you guys to know because if we hide something, it's a lose for all of us. Yeah, it just seems like the Hasbro Pulse site and some of those other things would be ways to get that out there because we're yeah. all just stuck speculating. Yeah, yeah. Has, I mean, Hasbro Pulse is a, is a, is a fantastic uh, uh, something that's kind of getting off the ground for us. We launched it last year, um, and it's still improving, and we're still trying to learn and grow to figure out how that can be the the ultimate home in time for you guys. And that is the that's the plan and vision. So we really do hope that. You know, in time as we, you know, as we learn and we start moving towards this more digital media uh, friendly world that we have a, a voice that we can talk to you guys. Because we know you guys are always uh, looking to, to hear more. And uh, as it is today, we get very few moments to actually spend together to, to go through these things. We see each other at Toy Fair, uh, possibly at New York, you know, around Comic-Con. And, of course, you know, at the granddaddy of them all here at San Diego. So. Now, speaking of exclusives, we see one over in the Hasbro toy booth this year that has a bunch of cool figures in it and Abomination. Got to ask, is that the exact same Abomination that we're getting in the Build-A-Figure wave? It is the same sculpt, but it has a drastically different deco. Um, the, uh, th this is sound weird. The Abomination that's in the RAF scene is kind of a forest green. Uh, the, Are we going to get into Pantones here? We're getting into Pantone. It's a, it's a textile print T-1956. 
Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, the the uh, abomination in the main line has different paint masks, so it's not just a color swap. It actually has it's painted in different areas, and it's a bit more of a olivey color palette, a little bit more uh, uh, I don't know, dirty looking, I guess. Uh, but I, I like it, I, and I, I'm not sure if we have it here to show you guys later on in this weekend. But uh, I'll have to check. We still have some things locked away, hidden away, um, and we're going to be changing the cases tomorrow to show some of the extra variant parts and Excellent. you know and more reveals as well there too. Excellent. Now, I know in the past, like even we're seeing in here, we're seeing there's a new Dormu coming as a build a figure, and that was a way to get you know an exclusive that was from years past back out there. What was the thinking behind getting Abomination out there so close together, you know, both times? Uh, that's a that's a good call. Yes, uh, Dormammu is uh, coming back out. He has a uh, his body type has a slight repaint. His spells are uh, different. Uh, he's a little bit uh, deeper in color than the one. Skulls are different color. Yeah, the skulls are actually way cooler this time around. I think. Um, but uh, uh, when we make those things for Comic Con, you know, the Comic Cons are special, right? They're they're hard to get. And our Marvel fan base is so much larger than just what it can make it to a Comic-Con. So by taking some of those big characters that we've done in the past and bringing them back out in the future um, is something that we're going to be looking to do when we can. You know, I don't like to give everything a back out because I do like to make sure that whatever we create is special. And while we do bring things back out, we do like to give them variant decos to make them to, to pay homage to what we did before. And if you have the last item, that's still a very special collector piece for you. Um, but there's some of the figures that are just too good to only live on those small volumes of, you know, a Comic-Con special. The Abomination that you asked about, uh, the timing of the waves was just a little bit different than what we had for Dormammu. Dormammu was always uh, intended to go for Strange, which is the end of the year, but with Cap being throughout the whole year, it was just, uh, it just they just fall a little bit closer on, on, on you know, back-to-back -back with each other. Sure, sure. Can we talk about this? What do you want to know about this? Uh, well... First of all, how can you get it? Is it for sale here? It is not for sale here. Okay. This was debuted uh, just this week, though. Mm -hmm. It's our Captain America 75th anniversary premium role play shield. Um, you know, it's a uh, you know our uh, aluminum vibranium uh, composite yeah, alloy thing. Yeah, sure. A lot more aluminum than right vibranium. Wakanda, right? But you know, yeah, you know, um, yeah. It's actually it's from a uh, from a village on the outside of Wakanda. Okay, got it. You know, uh -huh. uh, but. You know, the, exactly. <laughs> they, exactly. They have a certain soldier, like cryogenically frozen in this area. Yeah, they okay. may. Yes, yeah. yes, somewhere. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. What's going to be the price point on that? Uh, this sh shield is uh, retailing for two ninety nine. Okay, is it limited or limited availability or anything, or is it just? It's it, it's for pre order. Uh, mm -hmm. You can go to Amazon dot com or many other online uh, uh, places to pre order it right now today, and I believe it is available around October first. Okay. But can I see the back of that? Yeah, for a yeah. Sec? It's uh, so, I mean, we're really proud of this thing. It, 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 the, the the team did a fantastic job working with uh, Marvel to make sure the dimensions were accurate to the film. Um, they did a nice little uh, heat stamp in the leather straps that signifies and celebrates the 75th anniversary of Captain America. Um, yeah, it's just I don't know. I, I it's got a nice weight to it. Yeah, you know, impressive. I wouldn't take it in the backyard and play catch with your children. Um, <laughs> wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. Kind yeah, of, kind of punishment. But, you know, it's it, you know, it's just it's just oh, it's it's just shiny. Yeah. It is very shiny and pretty. <laughs> is this a final production version? This is a production sample. Yes. Wow, the it's never going to show up, but the the streaking and the paint's amazing. The little, yeah, it's like all the brush it, line. Yeah, it's all it's all it's all the kind of this the the spun stamp metal and the tint of the color is actually translucent, which allows the metal to read through, which is why you get such a a fantastic. Lustrous quality. Very nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm digging it. That's a that's a nice piece to, to come out the gate with a high end collectible. I like it. Yeah, this is along with the Iron Man helmet is, uh, well, and the the hundred dollar shield as well is our first venture into this kind of premium role play because, you know, Marvel by far uh, has some of the most iconic weaponry in cinematic universes. So and comic universes. So the the fact that we're now able to to create some of these things and bring them out to you guys, we're we're, we're, you know, as fans, stoked about it as well. Just give me some Deadpool katanas and we'll be all good. <laughs> Deadpool katanas. I'll put those on the list right next to the Wolverine claws. Yeah. Yeah. We want Wolverine claws. I'm sure our, our QA and safety won't have any issues with uh, shipping metal metal knives. Uh, yeah. So, Sorry. Probably not going to happen. 
back to the raft set for a second. Yeah. That's kind of an eclectic mix of characters in there. How'd you decide what to put in there and why specifically them? Okay. Um, it's, it's, always a, it's always a very uh, lengthy discussion when we're trying to figure out what characters go into any wave, right? Whether it's a wave of basic figures from mainline, an exclusive, uh, or a super exclusive like the, the Comic-Con sets. Uh, it's a whole team, you know, I, the, these things, you know, start with a uh, design sitting down with our engineering and, mar and marketing counterparts and kind of slugging over who they want. And when we come to these types of shows, the fan base of Marvel is huge, right? But fans of Marvel are fans of lots of different segments of Marvel. So to excite as many people as possible, we like to kind of mix things up when we can. We can't always do that, but sometimes Marvel is uh, more willing to allow us to mix universes. And Comic-Con is a great example where we have an idea that's inspired by Civil War with the Raft Prism. And, you know, a super max prison could have anybody in it, which allowed us to dip into the Iron Man lore, Thor lore, Hulk lore, you know, Iron Man, or did I say Iron Man? Uh, Spider-Man. So to, to get some of those characters from all those different worlds and all those different, different you know, mythos and put them into one super set of a lot of oddities, uh, for this type of show, we think it's fantastic because it tells a good story. Um, it's weird. You're right. If you look at the, the individual characters, like, why is Purple Man next to Dread Knight? You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. We just wondered if you guys had a lot of characters. You're like, we need to get a Dread Knight out somehow. And let's just throw it in the box. <laughs> it, it's yeah it's 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 actually a lot of fun you know it's like and we go back and forth trying to figure out what the right thing is and what the right character selection is and uh, you know sometimes we uh, fly too close to the sun and get slapped down uh, sometimes you know marketing looks at us like like we're crazy people and <laughs> in all fairness sometimes we are and we have to rebalance things to make sure we have the right mix but uh you know there's there's no rules it's just it's all over the place okay and what is about the three and three quarter inch line? How is that kind of uh, going forward? We've seen a lot of the comic two packs coming yep. out. Uh, what about, are there still some waves of the three and three quarter inch legends to be revealed on Saturday? Uh, yes, we do have some three and three quarter inch reveals. We have some reveals that'll be in the showroom as well as that'll be on the panel on Saturday. Uh, three and three quarter inch is still going well. We have our single figures. We have the comic two packs continuing. Uh, we had some exclusive two packs uh, this year at Toys R Us where we added a few more MCU characters with Panther and Agent 13. Uh, and then along with the three and three quarter inch, we're also, you know, growing our 12 inch line, which, you know, you saw the first three here. We showed them the first time at Toy Fair, and now we showed them to the public today with uh, Cap Iron Man and Spider-Man, and we have more 12-inch goodness coming in the future as well. Oh, really? That's, yes, sir. Yeah, I just got the Cap in the day I flew out here to Comic-Con. So well, that's kind of cruel. To, you didn't get to open it and play with no, it? No, I haven't had a chance to open See, it. See, that's like, that's like the cruelest fate. You open a box, you're like, I'm so happy, and i got to get on a plane. And you just kind of put it back in the box and you leave. And what about the X-Men? We've talked in the past about some challenges getting X-Men figures out for your team. But this wave has been off the charts popular. I can't believe how fast it's selling out. Deadpool's just disappearing in a blink off of Amazon. Is this voting well for future mutant figures? I certainly hope so. Um, uh, the Hasbro team is super excited that the fans are uh, as open and receptive to this wave uh, as we hoped they would be. Um, it's been a very long time since we've had a mainline X wave. Um, you know, the popularity of the franchise, you know, with you know, the, the great comic books and, 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 you know, and the movies that are being developed for it clearly shows that, you know, fans are out there and hungry for it and we can still do it. Uh, an hour and a half ago or so, we debuted on Marvel.com the first X character for 2017, which was Disco Dazzler. Oh, wow. She's got the roller skates. She's got the <laughs> microphone. She's got the Farrah era hair. Nice. I've never said that to you. That's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> Era era, uh, so she's going to be pretty awesome. She'll be in the in the showroom on Saturday, so come back and see her if you didn't see the feed from uh, Marvel. And uh, yeah, you know, hope, let's let's just hope the future continues to look bright. And there are plans for a anniversary wave next year for X, and we'll see where that goes. So I'm not going to ask if I'm going to ask when can we expect to start seeing Deadpool variant paints. Oh, <laughs> Deadpool variant. Yeah, you know, uh, he's he's a relatively popular character, isn't he? Yeah, no, I think you could definitely be looking forward to some uh, Deadpool in the future, you know. Um, he's just, he's a, he's a gorgeous looking character. That's if nothing story, else, yeah. he's just, you know, he, he's, he's very, you know, kids uh, are, are drawn to it. He looks like a red luchador ninja, you know, crazy guy. Uh, 
it, that's just kind of a win for everybody, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And with the Black Panther, that thing went crazy high on eBay, and then we had the a little bit of trouble with Nick Fury. You guys really fixed that by shipping solid cases of that almost immediately. And uh, were you thinking about doing the same thing with Deadpool since he's such a popular and he's going so fast? Uh, I'm not certain. That's a good That's a good comment. And I'll be happy to talk with our marketing partners about that. You know, we, we did realize that Deadpool was going to be a big draw in the wave uh, without without any, uh, you know, doubt. But um, it had been so long since we had done an X-Wave instead of putting him in the case multiple times or Wolverine, which we normally would do. We wanted to just give you, you know, eight amazing new X-Men. Uh, well, not all new, you know, a lot of them you've seen before, but, you know, some you we, we'd, like, we'd like to give you as much depth as possible for this for this relaunch of, uh, of X-Men. Well, Dwight, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to what you've got sh to show us on Saturday. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, stay tuned, hang with us, and we'll have some more great stuff to show you soon enough. Great. Thanks so much. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Marvelicious Toys with more collecting news and reviews at MarveliciousToys.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, make mine Marvelicious.